Welcome and blessings. Schools celebrate academic entrances and exits because students are our life's work. Girls come to the Elms with great potential. They come ready to learn, to grow, and to expand their sense of being alongside a growing set of expectations. In turn, our graduating seniors leave the Elms having expanded that great potential, ready to demonstrate the skills they have developed, ready to advance their career aspirations, and prepared to make important contributions back to society and the world. Today, we celebrate this scholarly circle of life and the class of 2021. Our seniors have lived a lifetime since March of 2020, when the Elms doors were closed due to COVID-19. They have demonstrated, however, extraordinary spirit and resilience in the face of challenge. They have risen to the occasion, and they have completed their senior year with grace, style, and confidence. As members of the Elms academic community, we stand in awe of your progress and your accomplishments, dear seniors. Thanks to all who have joined us to celebrate as we extend blessings and best wishes to the class of 2021. Good evening, Dominican Sisters of Peace and Sister Patricia Tuhill, members of the Board of Trustees, Ms. Bircher, members of the faculty and staff, parents, family, and friends, my fellow graduates. On behalf of the class of 2021 and the entire Elms community, I welcome you to the celebration of our commencement. The past four years, however quick or slow you may have felt they went by, have finally reached their climax. This culmination is more than just an ending. It is a milestone in the lives of these women before you, a milestone that marks our entrance into the world as young adults. It's been a path paved with four years of friendship, laughter, tears, frustration, and joy. We are all so honored that you have come to celebrate this new beginning and to commemorate the moment we cross the bridge from childhood and enter the world as adults to the women in the class of 2021. As we step away from the Elms and into a new world of opportunity and responsibility, always remember that you came from such a unique and united class. This year has shown us that anything is possible and everything can change in a moment's notice. May God continue to be with every one of us on our new journeys and help us to be as bold, strong, and independent as we have become at the Elms. Welcome to the commencement of the class of 2021. Heavenly Father, as the class of 2021 gathers here this afternoon in your presence for the last time as high school students, we take this time to offer up our praises and thanksgiving. You've guided us through the past four years at Our Lady of the Elms from the challenges to the great times that we cherish. May we continue to listen to your counsel and take refuge in your merciful heaven as we walk through the rest of our lives. We thank you, Lord, for the Dominican Sisters of Peace, whose four pillars has served us as model guidelines in both our academic careers and personal lives. It is the remainder of these values of community, prayer, study, and preaching that will help us to grow intellectually and to maintain our integrity as we become future women leaders. We thank you, Lord, for our teachers who have dedicated their time and effort into preparing us for the future. It is their patience, commitment, and compassion to the student body that has given us the tools for this moment and beyond. May, may they truly know how much their knowledge, 
guidance, and care means to the class of 2021. Most importantly, we thank you, God, for the love and support of our parents, family, and friends who have been with us every step of the way with their con continued encouragement and support. Lord, as we go out into the world along our different paths, help us to remember our lasting connection with one another and to always be grateful for the strong foundation that the Elms has given us. May we always look on our years here with fondness and never forget the relationships that we have built and the values we have cultivated. Now, Lord, we ask you to protect us and continue to lead us, for it is in you that all things are possible. As long as you are within us, we know we will not fail. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. This year has been difficult in so many ways. I know you may be tired of hearing about how this time is unprecedented, but while I'm here, I want to remind us all that, despite what some may believe, we have not only lost homecoming and walking whichever way in the hallway. Millions have gotten sick, including some in this group here, and thousands have died. And this does not come without an emotional toll. Mental illness is on the rise among people our age, and besides the mental turmoil of grieving for all those we have lost, we have lived through political turmoil as well. 
one of the largest civil rights movements swept the nation this summer. Political divides widened in a contentious election that ended in an assault on the Capitol building, a tragedy for our country's peaceful transfer of power. While we may have been high school students, that does not mean that we were not deeply affected by these events of the last year. Everyone here has lost someone, has lost someone either to COVID or to mental illness exacerbated by the pandemic. We have grieved individually and as a country for the fatalities of police brutality and political violence. And somehow, get this, we went to school the entire time. We were adapting to hybrid learning, sitting separately, and remembering to wear masks. Quite frankly, we are tired and I can't blame us. But I think I focused enough on the negatives, which have been so easy to focus on this year. However, just by quickly remembering our last year together, I am reminded of all of the good times as well as the bad. Our new senior lounge rocked. I know we were all sad that we would not be allowed inside the old lounge, and we were unsure if we would be able to partake in any senior privileges. Instead, we found a home for just dance during lunch, a whiteboard full of sometimes inspirational, sometimes kind of stupid quotes, and a JoJo Siwa poster, which is still missing, by the way. I found a place for eating and sleeping, laughing and crying. Our wall always made me smile, especially Liz's Olive Garden bag. Thanks for the little laughs, Liz. <laughs> I now know way more about Taylor Swift than I ever thought I would. Shout out to you, Bernie and Claire. We were able to have a prom, which I, for one, seriously doubted would happen. We got dressed up like we haven't in more than a year. We won Oscars and Don Tiaras, celebrating the young adults we have become. We even had Elms Olympics after a long year of waiting. At the time of writing this, I don't know how that turned out, but I hope we won. Okay, update. Lacey from the future says, we did win. Go Team USA. We had an amazing class president, Haley Vasco, who never gave up and has worked tirelessly over the last two years to make our class experience the best it can be, which I, as long as the entire class, am so grateful for. And here we are, graduating in a church with our families. Two years ago, we may have seen this as the absolute bare minimum, but now we know that the things we once took for granted are truly blessings and things to be thankful for. And that's really what I want to talk about today, how much we've all changed. Last spring when we went home, we took for granted that we would see each other and our families after an extended spring break. While we may have thought we were mature back then, we weren't. But I truly believe that the last year has aged us more than we ever expected it to. We have taken the jump from living in a world where we assumed we were safe to one where we couldn't leave home. We stopped viewing people who were staying home for our own sakes to people who stayed safe for the sake of others. We understand the real life consequences of our actions. We know that if we do not wear a mask, we will be all right, but we will be risking the lives of those around us. I also know that many of us, myself included, have struggled with sadness and anxiety this year. But I also know that none of us have been left with those feelings. And it has, I have never felt so welcome to share what I'm going through with my friends in the class, and it has been a weight off my shoulders. A year ago, I may have wanted to smile and not bring up the tougher parts of my day. And I think that's true for others as well. But now, everyone has such a strong sense of community with each other that we can truly share our lives. I am so grateful that we have been so strong for each other and that we've been able to hold each other up when one of us feels like we're crumbling. Of course, none of us has followed the rules perfectly or been perfectly kind, and that's all right. Regardless of whatever mistakes we have made, we have truly become empathetic adults. This is a gift that we can take with us no matter where we go. The world needs more kindness and empathy, and it needs people who are willing to utilize that empathy to stand up and advocate for others. We've all given each other superlatives this year, and I thought I'd continue the trend. Class of 2021, you are most likely to radically change the world with love. One of my favorite quotes is from Angela Davis. I am no longer accepting the things I cannot change. I am changing the things I cannot accept. This is not a class that stays silent when they see something wrong around them. We do not accept that there are people who would hurt others. Instead, our empathy gives us a path to change the world for them. So look out world, the strong, confident, kind young people of the class of 2021 are coming for you. And with that, I'll just say, creatures, it's time to fly. Thank you.
It is my pleasure to introduce Marcy Bircher, former upper school teacher of theology at Our Lady of the Elms. Miss Bircher's life can be summarized through an exploration of her two passions, art and theology. She received a Bachelor of Fine Arts from Kent State University in glass blowing and a master's degree in pastoral ministry and theology from Boston College. She served as a Benedictine sister in Erie, Pennsylvania for six years, where she combined her two great loves. You see, she worked as an artist of the monastery, restoring and creating stained glass windows and original pieces. Along life's journey, Miss Bircher continued to demonstrate her love for her faith through her work as a campus minister at six different colleges and universities before coming to Our Lady of the Elms in 2001. Miss Bircher has been greatly missed since she retired from the Elms in 2019. In retirement, Miss Bircher continues to work on her art and theology, painting icons and working in oils. She also enjoys spending time reading many books, gardening, and golfing, and like most of us, she looks forward to traveling once the world opens up again. Members of the class of 2021, faculty, staff, and guests, it is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Ms. Marcy, Marcy Bircher. I'd like to say thank you to all the people who made this in-person, real-time graduation ceremony possible so these girls can actually flip their tassels, toss their mortarboards, and hug each other goodbye in person. Everyone in the administration, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, the Dominican Sisters of Peace, parents, and you, the graduating class of 2021. It is such an honor to be here with you today to celebrate your wonderful achievement graduating from Our Lady of the Elms. I never imagined I would be the one standing up here giving your commencement speech. Of course, I immediately said yes when Mrs. Farquhar Jones extended the invitation. But truth be told, I wouldn't have missed your graduation for anything, no matter where it was or when it was held. Just saying. I did, however, fully anticipate sitting in the back with Miss Helen, JR, the other recent retirees and Elms alum. You do know the shelf life of retired teachers is short-lived in terms of how many students still remember us. You, of course, were my last sophomore theology class, room 124. For better or worse, we got to know each other then. But dudes, look at you now, graduating seniors. It's amazing to see how much you've grown and matured in those two short years, and I am so very proud of you. So no, I wouldn't have missed your graduation for anything, but now that I'm standing up here, I'm reminded of the 18 other Elms graduation ceremonies I sat through as a faculty member, and the four graduations I earned on my own. I must confess, I do not remember any of the speeches given at any of those commencement ceremonies. Yes, I do recall who some of the speakers were and maybe a little of what they had to say. Yeah, but not much. So before I even get started, I'm letting you off the hook by saying it's perfectly okay if you don't remember anything I say today. Wait, except for one thing. I want you to remember I said, breathe, just 
breathe. As you may recall, that's how we often started class together, at least on Fridays when we did the mindfulness meditation or contemplative sitting. We let go of the places in our bodies where we were holding on to stress, and we attempted to quiet our monkey minds by redirecting our thoughts to our breath. Breathe, just breathe. And we did this in total silence. Yes, parents, your daughters actually sat in silence for up to 15 minutes. Hard to imagine, I'm sure. We may have been doing mindfulness meditation, but I always reminded you what we were really doing was sitting in the presence of God who loves us fully and completely. And now here you are at your high school graduation. And after the year we've had, it couldn't have come any sooner. There's a lot to be said about going through a pandemic during half of your junior year and all of your senior year. It sure wasn't easy. But now that there is light at the end of this pandemic tunnel, let's take a look at what you've learned from it and what you can take with you into the future. I made a list. Number one, you definitely learned you can get used to just about anything, like so many new routines. You got your temperature checked and wore a mask all day long. You walked one way through the hallways marked off by tape and purelled your hands at the sanitizing stations a gazillion times a day. You practiced social distancing and sat in color-coded chairs in Mr. Jacoby's and Mrs. Stoneberg's classrooms. You even stayed six feet apart in the newly relocated senior lounge. There was definitely a learning curve as to what was and what was not safe to do, depending on what the scientists told us about the virus. Number two, you learned how to cope with intense feelings, fear, loss, grief, and anxiety that hit you hard and sometimes without warning. You probably know people who got sick from the Rona some may have tufted out at home, some may have been hospitalized, and some may not have made it. Memorial services were either virtual or postponed, which stunted our grief. Number three, you learn the importance of family. I'm guessing like so many families, you spent way more time together this past year than ever before. Some of that closeness was good, and some of it, I'm sure, drove you and everyone else crazy. Number four, since we were no longer socializing in person, like going out to restaurants, maybe you took up a new hobby. Did you learn how to cook or bake? Were you one of those ones who made sourdough bread? Maybe you learned how to knit or start a garden or put together puzzle after puzzle, after puzzle. Number five, since we were now mostly shopping online instead of going into stores, maybe you spent more time outside enjoying nature. Did you take walks in the metro park or around your neighborhood? Ride bikes? Go kayaking? Number six, you had to learn how to deal with disappointment. There are so many things to look forward to in high school in order to get through the school year, and yet much of that was gone for you this year. No homecoming dance, pep rallies, or even sitting with your friends in the mall area during your free periods. And forget about sports. Most indoor sports got canceled, and all the outdoor sports had to be adjusted in order to keep you safe. You had to give up a lot of fun stuff, and for that, I'm sorry. Number seven, lastly, you had to learn how to do school differently. Most of your work was now done on Google Classroom. 
Maybe you even got the latest blue light glasses to protect your eyes from all that screen time. And for better or worse, you are now pros at all things Zoom and Google Meets. If there's one thing this pandemic has taught us, it's that we can't go back to the world the way it was. As you prepare to leave the Elms and head off for your next most excellent adventure, namely college, I want you to remember the most important thing I tried to emphasize in all of my theology classes, the concept of compassion. Compassion is at the heart of every major world religion. Compassion, they say, can best be summarized in what is better known as the golden rule. Always treat others as you wish to be treated yourselves, and conversely, under no circumstance, never treat others as you would not like them to treat you. Each faith tradition also contends that you cannot confine your kindness to your own group. You must show concern for everyone, even your enemies, whomever you perceive your enemies to be, perhaps those with different values or religious beliefs than your own, those who look or act differently than you, or maybe those who are deliberately mean or arrogant. Karen Armstrong, one of my favorite theologians and spiritual writers, has much to say about compassion and the golden rule. After winning the prestigious TED Prize in 2008, she enlisted the help of leading inspirational thinkers from the three Abrahamic traditions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Together, they wrote, then launched the following year, the document called the Charter for Compassion, which Armstrong explains is based on the universal principles of universal justice and respect. The Charter is currently available in over 30 languages and has been endorsed by more than 2 million people worldwide. The beginning of the Charter reads, the principle of compassion lies at the heart of all religious, ethical, and spiritual traditions, calling us always to treat others as we wish to be treated ourselves. Compassion impels us to work tirelessly to alleviate the suffering of our fellow creatures, to dethrone ourselves from the center of our world and put another there, and to honor the inviolable sanctity of every single human being, treating everybody without exception with absolute justice, equity, and respect. In the midst of this global coronavirus pandemic, the world needs compassion, your compassion, now more than ever. Yes, this was a hard year, and our country is facing a reckoning with many issues. Systemic racism, which sparked last summer's worldwide Black Lives Matter movement, growing political polarization, ongoing gender inequality, the influx of unaccompanied minors at the southern border, the rising body count after so many mass shootings, continuing global climate change. The pandemic pulled back the veil on Asian American hate crimes and disproportionately devastated the Black and Latinx communities who accounted for increased numbers of COVID cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. And ultimately, the virus claimed the lives of over 596 thousand Americans. All of us continue to struggle with the emotional long haul of this pandemic. Indeed, this list is difficult to hear. So what do we do 
when faced with such monumental issues. Like the Charter for Compassion says, and as hard as it is to do, we must dethrone ourselves from the center of our world and put another there. We must cultivate an informed empathy with the suffering of all human beings, even those regarded as enemies. When you head off for college next fall, as part of the new normal, remember what you learned from living through this pandemic. Cultivate compassion and put it into action. Here are some practical ideas. Be friendly and listen to others. If you aren't already, become aware of the essential frontline workers in your everyday life. Look up from your phone and say hello to the person in the checkout at the grocery store or the barista at Starbucks. Continue to say thank you to healthcare workers. Be helpful. Find out where they are and support Black and Latinx owned businesses. If you can, donate to the food bank. Relax your judgments. If you haven't already, get vaccinated. Practice patience. Send encouraging texts to a friend who is struggling. Be present. Tell your parents and siblings how much you love and appreciate them. Stay in touch with family members, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, who you didn't get to see as often or at all this past year. Look after your neighbors. Decide which quarantine lessons to hang on to. Spending time in nature, keeping the hobbies you started, and putting together more puzzles. Practice self-compassion and take care of yourself, your whole self, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Binge on Netflix only when necessary. And like how I always remember Sister Mora at school, start your day with a prayer and end it with a blessing. Ladies, as you leave the elms, as we all inch closer to the end of this pandemic, and as we begin to develop our new normal, follow the golden rule. Cultivate, rejuvenate compassion in your life. And just like in our theology classes together, always remember to breathe, just breathe. Congratulations once again on your graduation. I am so very proud of you. Just saying.
Because the Blessed Sacrament is reserved in this church, we ask that you refrain from clapping and other signs of recognition until all graduates have been awarded their diplomas. Our Lady of the Elms High School proudly presents the graduating class of 2021. For having satisfactorily completed the course of studies at Our Lady of the Elms High School, diplomas are awarded to the following. Lacey Alexandra Nicholas. Lacey has decided to matriculate to the University of Akron Honors Program in the fall. She plans to major in history and political science with a minor in Spanish. Elizabeth Louise Roth. Elizabeth will be traveling to Bowling Green State University in the fall. She plans to major in graphic design with a minor in fashion. Emily Rose Stevens. Emily chose from three college scholarships and will apply her talents in graphic design at Bowling Green State University. Sara Bono Khan. Youngstown State University is Sara's choice for the next four years. Her major is biology pre-med with a minor in creative writing. Haley Nicole Vasco. With a number of scholarships from which to choose, Haley has decided on the University of Akron Honors Program as her destination in the fall. She will major in exercise science pre-physical therapy. Bernadette Eulalie Brocious. Bernadette decided to use her Odyssey scholarship to attend the University of Chicago. She plans to major in political science and minor in journalism. Emma Ruth Horak. Franciscan University of Steubenville is Emma's destination in the fall. She plans to major in psychology and minor in criminology. Amina Elizabeth Swan. Amina will matriculate to Cleveland State University in the fall. She plans to major in film and media arts. Gloria Gasper Matui. Gloria will be heading to California to continue her studies at Thomas Aquinas College. At this time, she is undecided about her major. Molly Ann Jones. A scholarship to Cleveland State University will assist Molly in pursuing a degree in education. Abigail Joy Hornacek. With a number of scholarship offers, Abigail has decided to attend Capital University in the fall. She will major in financial economics. Claire Marie Murren. Claire had several scholarships from which to choose and has decided to attend the University of Dayton Honors Program. At this time, she is undecided on her major. Grace Rose Bajir. With a number of scholarship offers, Grace decided to matriculate to the University of Akron in the fall. At this time, she is undecided on her major. Kaylee Sue Brunton. With a number of scholarships to choose from, Kaylee has decided on The Ohio State University as her college choice. She plans to major in biochemistry, pre-medicine, and minor in French and psychology. Ciara Zipporah Dougherty. Ciara had several scholarships from which to choose. 
she has decided to attend the University of Dayton. Her major is international economics and her minors are Spanish and French. Ava Jade Barlow. In the fall, Ava will be heading to Cleveland where she plans to attend Cleveland State University. Her intended major is pre-liberal arts and social science. Grace Isabella Heinley. Indiana is Grace's destination in the fall. She will be attending DePaul University where she plans to major in economics and minor in French. The plans of our students who are graduating in absentia are Emily Arnold will attend Case Western Reserve where she will major in neuroscience and biology and minor, minor in anatomy and physiology. Bailey Wang plans, plans to attend the University of Washington Seattle campus and major in psychology. And Winnie Zhu will matriculate to Cornell University and major in biomedical engineering. And as of June 5th, 100% of our senior class have earned 136 scholarships totaling more than $5.7 million, which is approximately $290,000 per student. Okay, now we get a chance to do something that you've waited for. So at this time, I invite our graduates, the class of 2021, to please stand. Now you will participate in the traditional symbolic rite which declares the world that you have actually graduated. So please move your tassel from the right side to the left side of your mortarboard. And now congratulations to the class of 2021. Okay, please sit and hold on to that mortar bar, please. <laughs> Bernie, yeah. The class of 2021 has earned the following academic award. They were presented earlier, but deserve note today. Please stand as your name is read. The Archie Griffin Sportsmanship Award presented by the OHSAA in recognition of the exemplary sportsmanship, eth ethics, and integrity on and off the field, which is Claire Murin. And now for the next awards, I will ask the recipients to come forward when your name is called. Presented each year to a senior who has given service without the thought of personal gain to her class and to her school community for four years and who has rapport with students, faculty, and administration. So our service award goes to Bernadette Brocious. In honor of her outstanding academic achievements and ranking third in her class in scholarship, recognition is given to our Dominican scholar in absentia, Emily Arnold. In honor of her outstanding academic achievement and ranking second in her class in scholarship, <laughs> recognition is our salutatorian, Sara Khan.
In honor of her outstanding academic achievement and ranking first in her class in scholarship, this recognition is given to our valedictorian, Lacey Nicholas. Each year, the Knights of Columbus Award is given to an outstanding senior. This senior is chosen for general excellence in all fields of endeavor for leadership, character, and service. Traditionally, this student is chosen as a result of a joint vote by the faculty and the senior class. This question is asked, who is the classmate that you respect the most? Our many communications to students end with a, a variety of the same theme, I urge you to be the very best scholar, the very best woman you can be. Who is the woman you dream of being? This year's recipient of the Knights of Columbus Womanhood Cup has experienced leadership, responsibility in the school, excellence in academics, maturity of judgment, and is truly a woman in the most noblest sense of the word. The Womanhood Award goes to Claire Muir.
My dear graduates, I bring you love and congratulations from the Dominican Sisters of Peace, Sisters and Associates in Mission. And I want you to remember what Sister Mora has taught you, that you start the day with prayer and you end with a blessing. And as your wonderful speaker proclaimed to you today, just breathe as I now give you this special blessing and we ask the Holy Spirit to open your hearts and let it descend upon you. Lord, giver of all good gifts, we ask your blessing on these our graduates as they leave the elms to begin the next phase of their lives. We ask that you shower them with the gift of integrity so that they will be beacons of truth in a world that is troubled by doubt and misinformation. Give them the gift of courage so they will stand up for what is right, true, and just in a world that is often uncaring and biased. Give them the gift of resilience and confidence so that they will be able to accept difficulties and setbacks, knowing that they can learn from their mistakes. Give them the gift of creativity so that they will be a source of new ideas, richness of spirit, and beauty for themselves and others. And lastly, we ask that you give them the gift of deep faith in you so that they know who they are, held close to your heart, and loved with a love that never ends. Graduates, you embody the values of the Elms. May you remain women clothed with strength and dignity, who are able to laugh without fear of the future. And may our triune God be greatly blessed in you, now and forever. Amen. Oh.